know Ben Armstrong by his YouTube name, BitBoy. He's amassed millions of followers online and he's become one of the leading voices in the crypto universe. I sat down with Ben to hear how he got started in Bitcoin by accident and to find out which cryptos he's going crazy for. Take a look. What was your intro to cryptocurrency? So I first got into crypto in 2012. I bought Bitcoin. The long and the short of it is I had to buy a software that required Bitcoin. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I got a little excited. I got a little too excited. So what happened is one night I go look at my account and I had just had a little bit of money left over in my account uh, the, for the, the service I had to pay for. I had a little bit left in Bitcoin and it was worth thousands of dollars. And I was like, what in the world just happened? And people would go back, that was in November of 2013 when the prices started skyrocketing. Uh, Bitcoin had gone from $12 to like $250 or $200, whatever it was the day that I sold. And I met a guy at McDonald's over the Wi-Fi from localbitcoins.com and I sold it. I was like, man, a couple thousand dollars, I, that's great for me. I took my family on a little vacation, we went down to Florida and uh, paid off a couple bills. And I was like, man, this was really, really great. Well, fast forward to 2017, and that money that I had spent over that year and then what I had eventually sold would have been worth like a lot, lot more. And so, <laughs> you know, so that was kind of like my moment in 2017 of, of, man, I should not have ever sold this. And one of the reasons why I sold it was because I didn't know anything about it. I actually remember trying to learn about Bitcoin at the McDonald's when I was waiting for the guy because he was late and there just was not a lot of good educational resources. YouTube videos were just kind of like narrated, you know, weren't real people doing the videos. Only a couple of YouTube channels about Bitcoin even existed back in 2012. And so, you know, fast forward to today, that's what I do now is educate people through my YouTube channel because that that is what cost me big was not having that education early on. Absolutely. Um, and it just seems like I don't know, in the last year or so, it's really blown up or, you know, moved into um, mainstream. You see all the financial networks talking about it now. Um, you know, you see places like Sony have like a an NFT department now. Um, so do you, I'm sure you had a lot to do with that because you have so many subscribers on YouTube. I mean, anyone that I know that's in the space knows who you are. So uh, when you first started doing this, who were you trying to reach and were you surprised by how many people you do reach now? Well, at first I was surprised by how many people I didn't reach because I started this channel in January of 2018 and uh, for a long time we got no traction. Um, I was lucky, like a great video for me at that time would have been if I had a thousand views over a month on one video. A lot of people, they look at my channel now and they look at my success. We've we got our, our, our silver play button in the background here. We also got our gold play button uh, in our other studio where we have over a million subscribers. And all that stuff is great, but I try to preach to people like, it was the times when people weren't watching my videos that I was getting better at what I was doing. And that's when I was actually learning the most about crypto. And it's very easy when people aren't watching to quit. And then you never get the success that, that we eventually got. I always viewed myself as, I thought we had the potential to be the mainstream channel because you know, there's a lot of nerds in crypto. People know that there, there there's a lot of, of n not just nerds, like kind of nerdy stuff, you know, being nerdy is trendy now. It's cool, you know, it's cool. People play video games and mine crypto, but you know, that's not everybody. That's not, you know, what the mainstream right. of people who have money to invest are. And so, you know, I always look at myself as a little outside of the bubble there because I'm like a normal American guy. I love sports, I love my family. I coach my kids' baseball teams. Like I'm just a regular everyday person. And because of that, I thought I had a, a good advantage to, to be able to reach people that the people that are a little too in love with talking over people's heads can't reach. Because people like to impress people with their knowledge of crypto and their understanding. And sometimes they go too far into the tech. Most people don't care, you know, like just most people don't care about the tech behind the internet that makes it work, but everybody uses the internet. So uh, I, I was surprised after two years of nobody really watching my channel that over the last year and a half, things really exploded for us. It's been a, a pleasant surprise. and. You know, obviously the price of Bitcoin going up played a big role in that and, and the, the better yeah. adoption of, of crypto has played a role in that too. And I, I think we kind of go hand in hand. I mean, we're, we're pushing the message out there and people are listening to it. But you quit your job. I mean, this is what you do full time. So when, when did that happen? And you were like, this is it. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I, I told my wife yesterday, we were talking about, I said, you know, when you married me, you know, you, you weren't playing on black or red on roulette, you were betting on one number. 
because I've always been a big dreamer and, and, and always a long shot to do something big. And when I started this channel, I had big dreams of what this could turn into because of my passionate belief in crypto and blockchain technology being the future. I believe 100% that it's the future. So we rolled the dice. Uh, in August of 2018, I, I left my previous job. I was the executive director of uh, a rehab facility, a nonprofit for teenage boys with drug addiction. So I help people get off drugs for a long time. It's something I went through in my past, you know, about 15 years ago. So giving back and helping people was something I wanted to do. But my my passion shifted to helping people in finance and helping people to understand and learn about crypto. So I left my job in August 2018, officially full-time crypto. In November of 2018, we sold our house, we moved to a rental, and then the money that we made from that is what we lived on for the next couple of years while we really got the channel going and, and got our crypto funds in order and things like that. So um, it was definitely a roll of the dice and uh, it, it's worked out beautifully. And I think the message here is, number one, you know, hard work is what will get you where you want to go. You know, you've got to work hard. You've got to put everything into it. And then, you know, number two, you got to find something you're extremely passionate about because when you find something you're very, very passionate about, you really can't fail, you know? And, and that's the way I feel about things. Hard work and passion will get you a long ways. Absolutely, agree. Um, well, you've done it. Let's get into it a little bit. I mean, you, you said it yourself, uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is the future. Uh, I believe it myself, but tell us why, because there are still so many, um, people that are, are nervous, especially with the dip in the market for the last couple of months. Um, I know I encourage so many people to invest and then all of a sudden it's like flatlined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so That's what do you goes. tell those people? Yeah. So uh, you've never lost anything unless you sell. So, you know, a, a big, a big misnomer is that the crap marks crash and everybody loses all this money. Well, the people who get in trouble are people who, let's say, they take loans to buy crypto out. And and then what happens is the prices drop and they've got to pay the interest back and the amount that they have in crypto isn't even worth as much as the loan that they got was. Those people get in trouble. The people that actually sell get in trouble. Until you sell, it's just an unrealized loss. And, you know, it's the same thing on the way up. You have unrealized profits. You see Bitcoin going way up. You're making a lot of money, but you, you don't take profits along the way. And that's a lesson we teach people as well, is as it's going up, you have to sell some to make the profits. Um, long term, you need to have an amount that you, you know, in crypto, we call it hodling. It comes from a typo in a Bitcoin forum, uh, Bitcoin talk forum many years ago, where somebody said they were just going to hodl their crypto. It was a typo. And now we just use the word hodl to mean you're going to keep it forever. You're going to keep it for a long, long, long time. You don't plan on selling it. You're not looking for a short, short term gain. Those people always win consistently. If you are in the crypto market for four years and you consistently invest, you will win and you will win big. We've never seen any assets in the history of Earth appreciate as much as we've seen Bitcoin appreciate since its inception, followed by Ethereum, followed by XRP, followed by Cardano. These are all coins that over the long term, they win and they will continue to win. And what happens is people get freaked out and they sell because it drops. Go back to 2017, December, I think it was December 12th or December 17th, somewhere around that range when uh, the CME future or the CBOE Bitcoin futures came out, it was a top of the Bitcoin market. Bitcoin was at $20,000. I convinced my grandpa at the day of the peak to put $3,000 into Bitcoin. And he did it. And he was mad at me for about two years. But you know what happened? <laughs> I stayed on him. I said, no, you gotta keep buying. You gotta keep buying. You gotta keep buying. He became a millionaire this year. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so when you look back at that time, people were saying the same stuff. They were scared. They were nervous. And there were people telling people to buy and it probably wasn't the best time to buy still. But if you keep it for four years, you are going to win. Crypto has shown that consistently throughout history. And Bitcoin does have detractors and Bitcoin has a lot of people uh, or there are a lot of people in the markets that are scared of Bitcoin. People are always scared of change. Imagine the change. OK, when, when people think talk about the change to crypto and digital currency, Think about, let's go back. Do you think that's a greater change? Or do you think it was a bigger change when the first bank was like, you know what, let me let me take that gold. And instead of that gold, I'm gonna give you pieces of paper to use to go give people. People will be like, what? Like, no, I want my gold. I don't want a paper that represents it. So really the beginning of, of, of paper currency was a much more dramatic shift than what we're seeing right now. We can all kind of read the tea leaves and know everything is going digital. So. There are, you know, the banking infrastructure is trying to, you know, and, and the, the the countries and the finance ministers, they're all trying to create their own versions of crypto that's more centralized, that where they can control it. 
Right. So whether it ends up being a, a centralized or decentralized crypto in the future that wins out, I hope it's decentralized. There, there's no doubt crypto is the future. Coming up on Beyond the Blockchain. Crypto I'm really excited about right now. I would say like here, here's a really good one. Here BitBoy Crypto's top crypto picks and why. <laughs> 